Lovelies, it's NYX from NYX & Co and I am here to bring you a very informative video, hopefully, about communication with systems. So if that sounds fascinating to you, let's get into it. There might be a couple of moments in here that are like, yeah, NYX, no duh, but stick around and I think you might learn something. So you're getting closer to a system. Was perhaps a friend or family member diagnosed with DID? I'm going to give you some tips and helpful hints on how to kind of manage this. Step number one, just don't panic. There's nothing to be worried about. Just a couple more steps to your day-to-day -day routine that you may need to adjust to better accommodate somebody with a multiple life. We've gotten a lot of questions about like, how do I communicate with alters? How do I talk to a system? How do people behave around you guys? How does your cosplay group treat you? And all of these things are very simple. We are our own people. And so we are treated exactly like that. So here are some tips on how to befriend system members and systems that you might know in your day-to-day -day life. First off is the old cliche of just be yourself. <laughs> I know, I know, it sounds very simple and it might seem like a bit of a no-brainer, but we want to get to know the true, authentic you. First encounters are always a little awkward. I'm gonna be the first one to say that and I think we can all agree. Breaking the ice is a little difficult, however, being your true, authentic self around us makes it easier for us to be our authentic selves around you. Step two, reassurance. Reassurance is very, very important with systems. For example, if an alter that you haven't met is out and about, reassure them that you are a safe person to front around. If the host or a system member has shared with you the fact that they are a system, be a reliable person. Keep that secret if they want it to be so. Reassure them that you are a safe and good friend for their health. Not all system members are going to trust you immediately. Trust can, in some circumstances, take a lot to build up, so be patient. Reassure the system that they can be themselves in your presence. Reassure them if you want to be emotionally available to them that you are a good person to vent or talk to, should they ever be having a bad day. A lot of reassurance can go a long way to building up a new friendship. Step number three, be patient. Getting to know each other can take a short amount or for more guarded members, a longer amount of time. Patience is key. And try to keep in mind and remember that trauma and mistrust is a large part of DID. And if you have good intentions and you're a good person, they'll come around. The next step is get to know them. Use their names, use their pronouns if you're in a safe place to do so. Practice making sure that you are gendering them correctly and also calling them by the right name if they want to go by it. Get to know their interest and their favorite things. Try to bond over similar shared interests. Get to also know things that they don't enjoy, things that they don't really like and don't like eating while they're out in fronting. This can go a long way to make sure they're more comfortable. Remember, we are our own people and have our own interests, likes, and dislikes. The next step is learning triggers. Now, this might probably happen further along during your friendship. Keeping track of trigger sets for each member is highly important. This information is probably not going to be trusted with you right away. That's going to be something that's going to require a little bit more trust, but don't divulge or use triggers against system members to get them to front. That's not cool. <laughs> That's really, really not cool. There can be both positive and negative triggers. Like a positive trigger would be Rowan likes jazz music and the rain. It's raining. I almost guarantee you at some point in time, he is switching to go stand in the rain. There can also be more negative triggers like trauma related triggers which you may get to know if a system starts to open up to you. Keeping that in mind, never use negative triggers against a system. And for our last general tip, keep in mind that each system is different and we are all different people. 
what might work for one might not work for the other some might be more for open and overt and out there others might be covert and closed off and a little more cautious it all depends on the persons involved but these general tips might help you with either kind this is very important to getting to know one another try not to alienate them or make them feel unwelcomed sometimes that adjustment can be a little difficult we're still even working on it in our own life but greeting them can go a long way. Even if you're busy and have other things to do, just a common hello is very helpful. Now we'll move on to more covert tips for systems that are not as open and to help in moments of covertness with systems that need it. Is the system around you more covert? Then we might have some tips for that as well. Systems might have periods of time where they might need to be more covert. Some simple communication tips for some newly diagnosed, perhaps, systems out there or some systems that want more communication. I have two very helpful suggestions. One is the addition of a system journal, which is basically trying to communicate all together, writing questions and asking each other things where every system member can respond and talk about it. There are a couple of websites that sell system journals that might have prompts and getting to know you things, schedules on who's fronting, and also questionnaires that you can fill out, as well as several, several pages to attempt to make contact and write in. Let your system know that you have this available. Before we had any sort of application to help us communicate, that is how we started. For newly diagnosed systems or for systems and system friends, there is an application called Simply Plural. Simply Plural is an incredible application that helps keep track of when alters are fronting, how long they've been fronting for, a section on that front sheet to tell them why they fronted if they want to share that, there is a poll section where you and the system members can vote on things like what color should we dye our hair or should we block so-and-so on Instagram? <laughs> Little tiny things like that, day-to-day -day things that can go a long way. This also has the ability to set up different profiles for each alter member, including um, very descriptive things about what they like, what they don't like, um, their favorite colors, height, appearance, and also private chat forms that you can make groups with and then also DM them so you can have private conversations. I highly recommend downloading Simply Plural. It's helped us a lot with communication and it has helped us a lot with keeping track of our days when before it was very confusing on who was out, who was doing what, what was going on. Now there's a place to do so and my system is very involved in it. There is also the opportunity on Simply Plural to add friends so your trusted friends can see your front log and see who's out, if that's safe for you. So how can you help a system that's more covert? Come up one with a group chat maybe, whether that's on your phone on an application like Facebook, Instagram, Discord, or it's a text chat. I know we can always use the group chats available to us and some of my system members do just to check in and be like, hey, it's Rowan, I'm out, how are you? And it helps an awful lot. If you're out in public and for some reason somebody doesn't have their phone and cannot tell you that they're fronting, come up with a catchphrase or a hand gesture that can tell you that somebody has switched. This emergency catchphrase can tell you that somebody has switched, and if you come up with several catchphrases to add on to the original catchphrase, you can tell who is out. Oh, the room was hot. I just pressed my lip on it. Ow. Ow. Like that. I guess I'll be finishing the video really quick for this one, so I get to talk about littles, but I'm gonna get out of this. Hi. It's the makeup I can ignore, but it's the outfit I cannot. It was a lot of breast and it was a very short skirt. Now I'm chilling in a button-up and a 
boxes essentially because I didn't really feel like putting on pants and it's like a Skype call, isn't it? So why is it important to know how to behave and communicate with littles? Littles are child alters in age, so that means that they are children, you know? It's a general rule of thumb for most littles. We are very protective of our system littles. Not all systems are the same. Some might be more generous with information about their littles and however they run themselves is completely valid. So it is how the system views itself and its safety. Keep in mind though that littles are actual children so it's very... <laughs> It's very imperative and important for you to treat them as such. Please keep System Little's information heavily and well guarded from other individuals in life. If a system has trusted you with information about their Littles, then make sure that you don't post them anywhere or post information about them anywhere. This is to keep the system safe. Yet again, not all systems are very protective or overprotective of their littles and if they want them to be public entities, that is on them and that is their decision. However, for systems like us, we are very careful with who we trust information of our little ones with because they are children. These are also our most easily manipulated parts. Should an alter who is a little front during a, say, live event or something that is very public, make sure you keep the name redacted and stay by them as long as possible. Editing out personal information for a video should they front is also very important. If a little fronts in public and say perhaps a grocery store, then have them stick next to you. We have a rule in place should one of our littles ever front in such a public place that they have to keep their hand on the cart. They cannot leave the cart, they have to be around the other person with the cart and they must be monitored by a gatekeeper to be well monitored and very looked after. There is also a rule for both Littles and for other system members not to share trauma around different parts. Now, for someone like me, I would not share my personal information with somebody like Natalia. While we're both protectors, um, we suffer different traumas and our traumas can cause the other person to spiral. So if somebody in a system tells you trauma, Keep it to you and that altar unless it is safe to give it to somebody else that you already know knows. Divulging traumatic information to littles can be devastating. Some littles might hold on to trauma, but some of them might not have been exposed to the more drastic and dire circumstances that can happen in one's life. Keeping trauma away from littles as an entirety is the utmost importance. Some littles might not be traumatised parts, they might be what the childhood would have been like if no trauma had occurred. Thus, bringing trauma to an untraumatised part is a disastrous scenario. Some littles might be trauma holders and might have more advanced titles like protectors, which can be very difficult. Dealing with a sad, emotional child can sometimes be very complicated, but with patience and learning, I know and I believe that you can do it. Here are some quick do nots. We already talked about do not share trauma. Do not make every switch public knowledge. We might have switched for a very important reason or because of fear or trauma or being around somebody we do not trust. So it is very important to make sure you can read our signs and understand when we need to be overt and open with our life and when we need to be covert and close ourselves off to things that might be physically harmful, mentally harmful, or just harmful or stressful in general. Alters cannot die. They can split, however, they can go dormant and they can go integrate with other parts. That loss is going to be incredibly hard on the system members who are very close with them as they adjust to a new altar in their life and possibly even to you. Please be patient in circumstances such as this as you deal with those kinds of emotions and feelings. Know that we are right there with you. Do not be offended by a system asking not to speak on trauma or other such things. We will come around if we trust you enough when we are ready 
and if we do not decide to do so, please respect that. Ultimately, loves, I know I believe in you, and I know you're going to do wonderfully. I, I just know it. I... I've met so many wonderful people on this platform who are so accepting and so loving and so caring. And I just, I need you to know that I appreciate how open and just wonderfully kind-hearted you all have been to us and so supportive. We really do appreciate it because we weren't all expecting that and it was a rather pleasant surprise. You're gonna do great. Just believe in yourself, right? Believe in yourself, know that you're doing your absolute best. And this is where we sign off, I suppose, because Nick's burnt our lip and I want to make sure that's okay because we're wearing a lot of lipstick so I can't quite see it. We'll see you later in the next one, lovelies. Remember that you can help us dismantle the stigma against DID. So goodbye, lovelies, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Thank you so much for this month's patron, Loving New Dawn, Baby Blue, Ray, and MCS for your wonderful and continued support. Thank you so much, you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.